Well, it's finally arrived here in Ohio. The cicadas brood 10 are here. I found them in my front yard in the grass. We first noticed a little pinkish white little nymph, I guess, crawling out of the shell. And it was just topping a blade of grass out front. So of course, I ran and got my camera and tried my best to get some close-ups of it so I could really, really see what they look like. They are so fascinating. They are a really large insect with big bulging red eyes. You can see this one still right near its exoskeleton that has just shed. Those crunchy little things will be in the grass probably for a long time. I know the kids like to gather those up because they have a weird shape and look like they are the insects themselves just not moving on the tree, but really it's just the skeleton that was shed or the outer skin. Now these pale pink looking ones one of the references on the internet referred to them as land shrimp. I'm not sure if that means that someone has eaten them and they taste like shrimp, or it's just some kind of meaning because there's something to dine on for all the birds. And I don't know, raccoons, coyotes, probably the dogs will eat them. I've seen some warnings about dogs eating them, but I can't imagine that if all kinds of animals eat them, wouldn't I find coyotes dead in the street because they ate too many of these? So I don't know, but check with your own vet to see if they'll hurt your animals if they are um, eating these out in the yard. Now these, uh, newly emerged ones probably are the softest version that you'd get. Maybe they're the tastiest, I don't know, because I'm sure not going to eat one. But this one just kind of struggles. I guess it's the instinct for them to climb vertically. And so they just sit and struggle and struggle and struggle on the blade of grass. And I guess they dry out and if the wings are operable, they can fly over to the tree. And if not, I'm not sure how they make it all the way over to the tree. Now this right here where the um, uh, cicada changes color, it's about an hour or so later and you can see the difference in the color. It's gotten a whole lot darker along the body. And I guess the wings are all more hardened and, I don't know, fluffed out like they need to be. There'll be quite a few more pictures here that you'll see where the wings aren't really fully straightened out. So I'm not sure if that's something that will just occur later or some of them don't straighten out. This one is again about an hour later and it's even darker than ever, but still with those big red eyes. But it seemed to me as I watched them that these ones that are lingering in the grass and not hurrying over to the trees, maybe they're not the, I don't know, survival of the fittest they are not getting over to the trees. They're not getting up the trees fast enough because they're out in the open lawn and the birds can get them. Now you can see these here that their wings aren't straightened out all the way. So that makes me wonder if these that linger in the grass, something is wrong with them as far as their wings aren't straightened out far enough because they do seem curled. And when you see a quote unquote a good one, it looks like its wings are all nice and straight already and it's ready to fly if need be. 
this one seems to be still struggling. But that one, look how nice and straight its wings are. Real dark, ready to go. But since it's staying right there in the grass, I don't understand why it's not already climbing toward the tree. You can see all of them. They're just many, many, many all through the grasses. Darker and darker. So they've been out several hours. But I'm not sure why they just stay in the grass. Maybe they've been injured by birds. This one is darker and not even quite out, out of the exoskeleton yet. So I don't know if he's going to make it because he's got a ways to go even to struggle out of that shell. He looks good, but he needs to get a move on. If you try to help them, they flutter so it appears they can fly. But then again, I don't know all that much about cicadas. Look at all those shells. I am quite sure we're trying to tread softly around here, but you can't help it. You hear the crunch and the crunch, and you know you've stepped on some. There are that many all around. Now when they make it to the base of the tree, they can start climbing the tree, but they just need to hurry and get on over there because I know they've got to climb to the top. They go up there to mate, and continue the life cycle. Now these ones that the, the little new cicada that emerged from the ground and got itself all the way up to the tree before it shed the exoskeleton, those seem to me to be the ones that will survive because they got that far and shed and you know that one's probably at the top of the tree now because that little skeleton is what it left behind and these stragglers may not make it you can see this one's wings aren't straight so i don't know if that's something that will keep it from surviving or if the wings will straighten out later look at that one very dry but not straightened out now this is about a i'd say a 25 year old tree here it's a bradford pear it's a wonder it's still standing, but they're going to try to climb this tree. And many of them are already way up to the top. But these stragglers, I worry about them because I think they may be eaten before they ever make it. Or maybe there's some reason why they just can't seem to get up through there. He's got nice straight wings, but he's not climbing. Jerry picked him up from the ground and put him on the tree, but he's not going anywhere. Now this one looks frisky and the wings are straight. It's trying to climb, but it's just staying on the blade of grass. It's getting on me. I can only stand it for so long. <laughs> and then I've got to shake it off because I don't want it to climb. Now Jerry launches them into the air. Don't know if they fly over there or just fall back to the ground. Now, the audio portion that you're hearing, later I went out back in the late afternoon and I just recorded the sounds that they make. So that is the cicada mating call. The males make most of that singing loud shrill and they, it says that the females make more of a clicking, ticking sound. But you can see this one is struggling to get up to the top of this tree. He may make it. He looks strong. His wings are straight. They seem to be all dried. So he may be one of the ones that will survive. Or maybe it's a sheep. I don't know the difference. I can't tell. but you hear that shrill sound. Look at that one. Its wings are all, I don't know, not really ready to fly. They're not straightening out. 
They are huge bugs. Insects, I should say. They are really, really big. Look at all the little skeletons left. And these would come off the tree real easily. You see those little white things that are in the middle? I don't know what that is. Back on the blog post, I mentioned that it might be some kind of a, I don't know, not an umbilical cord like a mammal, but something that, I don't know, helps pump it out. I, don't, I couldn't find anything on the internet of what those little white strands are, but they were almost on every one of the exoskeletons that I saw. That one looks really good, but he or she better hurry up the tree. Now, I uh, brought out some little pieces of wood from the garage because I wanted to put it against a light background so you could see it more clearly. But when you hold the wood up, their instinct is just to climb vertically. So there they go. And he passes all his... Uh, Brothers and sisters, as he goes up the tree. Look at that. I really love looking at these. I don't mind that sound. My daughter was married 17 years ago. Her wedding was an outdoor wedding, and that was the last cycle of this these broods that emerge every 17 years. And you could hear them screaming in the trees. But it was, to me, just a pretty summer sound. It gets very, very loud sometimes. When you have your air conditioning on, driving down the freeway with the windows up, you can still hear them. But it's fascinating. I had to show you a little bit from my front yard just in case you didn't get to see them up close in yours. But I'm in Southwest Ohio. We've had our invasion now. So now I've got to wait another 17 years. But it's no hype. They won't bother you. Just look at them, enjoy, and enjoy their song.